A big challenge I face as a primarily technical indie dev is how to make my games look good. As you can see by the sprites in my mobile game, I'm not exactly an amazing artist, but I've learned that where you might be lacking in style, you can make up for it with movement. That's where easing formulas come in. What are easing formulas? Simply put, they're functions that take a 0 to 1 value and return another roughly 0 to 1 value. And you'll see why I say roughly later on. The idea is that we can give this function a percentage of an animation and get back another percentage for where the value we're animating should be. For example, let's say our animation takes 2 seconds and we're animating between the values 1 and 5. If 1 second has passed, then we'd give 0.5 as the argument. This particular function would return 0.29, which we can then use in a linear interpolation formula to determine what the value should be at. Let's make a simple example in Unity. We're going to move this cube from one position to another. To do this, we're going to use a coroutine which in Unity essentially acts as a way to selectively run update logic. This method will take a start, end, and duration. Then we need a timer variable that will be counting up until it reaches the duration argument. Since both lerp and easing functions expect values between 0 and 1, we're going to divide the timer by duration and store the result in a progress variable. This scales the timer to a percentage of the total animation duration. Then we can use vector3.lerp to interpolate between the start and end positions and provide the result of our easing function as the third argument. Then set the cube's position to the result of the lerp. At the end of the while loop, we'll add yield return null, which will make it so that the body of this loop will run every frame until it exits. That's what makes coroutines like a way to selectively run update logic. If you want, you can make the loop run on every fixed update, or at any time interval, really. Just remember to make the timer match. Lastly, we'll set the cube's position to the end, just to make sure that it ends up exactly where it should be. This doesn't necessarily need to be there, and you'll see in some cases later on where it won't be there. And that's it. After adding a testing handle, which is just going to run this coroutine whenever we press space, we can see that it animates the cube from start to end, taking whatever duration we give it. But this is just using a basic linear easing formula. How can we make this more interesting? Well, all we have to do is change the equation used here. Like, let's just square t, which is going to make this a parabolic easing function. It has a slow entry into the animation and accelerates until it reaches the end. This type of movement is called ease in. There are plenty of formulas you can use, and I normally go to easings.net to get them. In fact, in pretty much all of my projects, I'll normally just have a static class that has each of these implemented, and that way it's really easy to just reach for them whenever I need a formula like this. I'll also mention DoTween, a Unity package that provides an interface for doing this sort of animation. It's a great tool, but for the purpose of exploration, we're going to continue without it. Going back to our coroutine, with just this, we actually can do a lot. The bullets and linked use ease in and out to animate. They're used in literally every animation for ballistics menus, and even for smooth camera movement like this. This is a lot, but let's push this to see what kind of utility we can really get out of easings. Earlier I said that the return value of an easing formula is roughly between 0 and 1. One thing we can do is make a formula that goes past those bounds to create a really satisfying and bouncy animation. One thing of note is that all of Unity's slurp functions clamp the return value between the start and end points. So to actually get these easings to work, you can just make an unclamped version. Just know that if it's unclamped, it can go to a pretty wild scale during lag spikes. The other way I like to change up my easing formulas is making ones that return back to the start position. For example, the streak text in length 
is using an easing formula for that pulse animation. While I did this in a pretty hacky way, it honestly doesn't need to be this difficult. Unity provides a really useful struct called the animation curve that we can use. This gives us an easy interface inside the editor to define the shape of our curve. Inside of our code, it's pretty much just a drag and drop replacement for what we already had. We just have to add an argument for the animation curve and then replace the easing formula with curve.evaluate. One problem we can see is that since we're setting the cube's position to the end point after exiting the loop, the cube is teleporting to the other end of the path, and that's not what we want. To fix this, instead of setting the position to end, we can evaluate the easing at 1. One big limitation of this coroutine is that it only animates between two values. What if we want to animate between multiple? Well, if it's a fixed number, then it's honestly as simple as just duplicating the while loop. That's how I created this vault animation. It takes three positions. A start where the player is originally standing at, an end where the player should be at after the vault is done, and then a clamber point, which is essentially just the top of the ledge that the player is vaulting over. The duration is cut in half, essentially making it so that it takes half the time to go from the start to the clamber point, and the rest of the time to go from the clamber point to the end. And then the process of going between each point is just using that same while loop that we've already seen. But let's say we're looking for a generic solution where we can provide any number of points and have them be animated between. To do this, we just take the same while loop we were using before and then wrap it in a for loop. The first thing that we need is a keyframe struct, which is going to contain a position for the next place to animate to, a duration for how long that will take, and an animation curve to describe what kind of easing is going to be used. Then the coroutine is going to now take a target transform, which will be what's getting animated, a start position to essentially represent the first keyframe, and then an array of keyframes that will be animated between. We'll use a prev key variable to keep track of the last keyframe position, since we'll need that for lerping. Then we can iterate through each keyframe and run the same while loop we've seen before, with some slight modifications. The duration, end position, and easing formula are replaced with the keyframe values. The start is also going to become the prev key variable. Prev key can be used as a start because we'll set it as the final position for that keyframe at the end of the for loop. One thing to note is that something general like this is basically Unity's animation system. So to a certain extent, it would be better to use that, but I think this is an interesting exercise. I have used something like this before to show objectives across a map. I essentially had an array of transforms where I would drag and drop those into an objective manager. And then just by having those in that array, it would run this kind of loop and then just animate the camera between them without having to create an animation myself. It just generated it when I pressed play. One limitation of this is that it can only produce linear movement. If you want to smoothly animate between points with curved motion, then you're getting into Bezier curves. And at that point, you should really reach for a library instead of trying to hand roll your own solution. One situation that's common but poses a unique problem is when you have to deal with changing start and end points. Moving a box from two fixed positions is easy, but how do you deal with a box starting here? Or here? You normally want the box to feel like it's moving at a consistent speed, but if it's start closer and you have the same duration, then the box will move slower. Whereas on the other hand, if it starts farther away, then it'll move faster. 
There are two ways to deal with this. One is to scale the duration based on a reference start and end point. I did this to make camera movement between stances for a first person controller. This way if the player cancels a transition from one stance into a transition to another, the camera doesn't feel like it moves at a different speed. For this, the reference points are the specific camera positions I set for standing, kneeling, and prone, but you could also use a reference distance if you don't have a specific position to use. The second option is by using a speed variable. If you have a start and end point, then you can calculate the distance and divide that by the speed to get the time it should take. I use this in the objective fly-through system to make consistently smooth motion between each objective regardless of how far away they are. Since I've started using easings in my games, it really has made all the difference. It doesn't necessarily have to be end product animations either. One thing that I appreciate about them is how quick they are to set up. A lot of the tweening I've been doing in that first person controller I don't think will stay, but it's been really useful as a way to quickly figure out the kind of feel final animations should have. They really are something that you can kind of just add wherever you want, and it will probably be an improvement. Anyway, it's time for me to get back to developing. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again soon.